Welcome to the New York City Housing Authority's Housing Choice Voucher Program Briefing. NYCHA Vision Safe, Clean, and Connected Communities. Before we get started, write down any questions that you may have. You may call the Customer Contact Center at 718-707-7771. Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. for clarification. Today we will walk you through the Housing Choice Voucher Program. The responsibilities of New York City Housing Authority, the family, and the owner or landlord under the program. The Housing Choice Voucher. Occupancy and Payment Standards. Your Housing Choices. Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity. Housing Quality Standards, HQS, Requirements. The Next Steps After Finding the Right Unit and Reviewing the Rental Packet. Owner Rental Documents. Applicant and Tenant Responsibility. And How to Contact NYCHA. We will now present an overview of the Housing Choice Voucher Program. The Housing Choice Voucher Program is a federally funded program that provides rental assistance to eligible families. Eligibility is based on family income and family size. NYCHA's rent subsidy is paid directly to the owner, and the family pays their portion to the owner, as well. The unit must be inspected prior to moving in, and regular inspections are required thereafter. Now, we will discuss the responsibilities of NYCHA, the family, and the owner. NYCHA's Responsibilities In administering the Housing Choice Voucher Program, NYCHA must Explain rules and regulations of the HCV program Each of vouchers and pay housing assistance payment, HAP, to the owner on behalf of the voucher holder Ensure all units in the program meet housing quality standards, HQS, by conducting a new rental, regular, special, and quality control inspections Conduct an annual review of the family's income and composition information to determine continued eligibility. Conduct a rent reasonableness evaluation to ensure the proposed contract rent the owner is requesting is reasonable. The family's responsibilities, one of two. It is the family's responsibility to find a vacant unit or an available Section 8 unit. The owner cannot be an immediate family member unless a reasonable accommodation is approved by NYCHA. Sign a private lease agreement with the owner once the unit passes inspection and you receive a move-in letter. Comply with lease terms. Submit complete, accurate, and timely information and documentation to NYCHA. The family's responsibilities, two of two. The family must. Comply with the annual review of family income and composition information, for example, marriages, births, adoptions, deaths, etc. This helps NYCHA determine a tenant's continued eligibility. Comply with requests for additional information. Cooperate with NYCHA for all inspections. Alert NYCHA and the owner if they wish to terminate the lease, and must do so before moving out. Pay for any utilities that the owner is not responsible for. Maintain any appliances that the owner is not required to provide. Ensure that housing quality standards, HQS, are maintained, and if there is an issue it must be reported to NYCHA. The Owner's Responsibilities It is the responsibility of the owner to sign and comply with the Housing Assistance Payment, HAP, contract and local housing laws. Screen the family before executing the lease and comply with equal opportunity requirements. Maintain the dwelling unit in accordance with HQS. Collect the share of the rent and do not request additional rent or side payments of any kind. Comply with all terms of the lease and state landlord-tenant law. Follow the federal laws which prohibit discrimination against an individual or family. Note, landlords must accept your government-provided rental assistance. If you receive Section 8, a landlord, regardless of property size own, must accept that rental assistance. Contact NYCHA when there is an unauthorized family move or a deceased tenant. Pay for utilities and services, unless paid for by the family under the lease. The partnership between the tenant, NYCHA, and the owner, one of two. This triangle illustrates the partnership between the tenant, NYCHA, and the owner. The document binding the tenant and NYCHA is the HCV Section 8 voucher. 
the tenant must comply with all family obligations, rules, and regulations to remain enrolled in the program. The document binding NYCHA and the owner is the Housing Assistance Payment HAP, contract. The owner must also cooperate with the rules and regulations of the program to continue to receive payments. And lastly, the document binding the owner and the tenant is the lease agreement, which is a contract between the tenant and the owner. The partnership between the tenant, NYCHA, and the owner, two of two. The document binding the tenant and NYCHA is the HCV Section 8 voucher. The tenant must comply with all family obligations, rules, and regulations to remain enrolled in the program. The document binding NYCHA and the owner is the Housing Assistance Payment Contract, HAP. The owner must also cooperate with the rules and regulations of the program to continue to receive payments. And lastly, the document binding the owner and the tenant is the lease agreement, which is a contract between the tenant and the owner. We will now review the Housing Choice Voucher. What is a Housing Choice Voucher? One of two. The Housing Choice Voucher is the document that authorizes you to search for an eligible Section 8 unit. The document indicates the number of bedrooms the family is entitled to, the issue date of the voucher, the voucher expiration date, and the family responsibilities. The voucher is valid for 120 days after the issuance date. NYCHA may extend this time frame for good cause, such as an approved reasonable accommodation request, which can be done online through NYCHA's tenant self-service portal. If granted, the voucher will be extended for 60 days. Please note, if you are moving in from another public housing authority, your voucher expiration date will automatically be extended 30 days from the initial voucher expiration date. What is a housing choice voucher? 2 of 2. Suspension of the term of the voucher. During the initial or extended term of the voucher, the family is required to submit the request for tenancy approval, RFDA, within 120 days. The family must also submit all other required rental documents. Once the form is submitted, the clock on the 120 days is stopped. NYCHA will then notify the family on whether the assisted tenancy has been approved or denied. If denied, the suspension is lifted and the timeline resumes. This applies to all families who are leasing a unit. Suspension applies even if a family that submits a request for tenancy approval decides to cancel such request. In such cases, the suspension ends when NYCHA learns of the cancellation. Under portability procedures, the requirement to suspend the term of the voucher applies to NYCHA only. Housing choice vouchers are not for sale. HCV, Section 8 vouchers are not for sale. Do not give the voucher to anyone, including the owner-landlord agent, or property manager. When you find a place to live, show the voucher to the owner along with the rental package documents. Confirm with the landlord that the apartment will meet the housing quality standards, HQS, and pass initial inspection. Beware of voucher scams. The HCV program does not require the use of a broker to find an apartment. NYCHA does not charge or request a fee in connection with applying for Section 8 or rental for Section 8. If you receive a request for payment from anyone posing as NYCHA personnel, report it to the New York City Department of Investigations NYCHA Inspector General at IG at NYCHA.NYC.gov, 2123063355 or the HUD Office of Inspector General at 1800347375 or www.hudoig.gov slash hotline. This is what your voucher will look like. It will include your voucher number, unit size, which is the number of bedrooms you are eligible for, today's date, and an expiration date, which is 120 days from your voucher issue and date. Now we will discuss the occupancy and payment standards. Voucher apartment sizes are determined by who is a member of your household. Number of people equals set number of bedrooms. Coming this fall. Single-person applicant households will be eligible to receive a one-bedroom voucher. Applicants may rent a unit with more bedrooms if the rent is equal or lower to their voucher payment standard. Applicants may rent a smaller unit than their voucher size, and NYCHA will pay the subsidy based on the payment standard of the smaller apartment. 
applicants and participants with a pregnant household member may be eligible for an increased voucher size. Occupancy standards are based on family composition. You can try to find a larger apartment, as long as it is within the voucher payment standard. Applicants and participants with pregnant household members may be eligible for an increased voucher size, dependent upon total family composition, as stated in the HCVP occupancy chart, NYCHA payment standards. NYCHA sets its payment standards based on HUD fair market rents, FMRs. Payment standards set the maximum monthly housing assistance payment, HAP, for the family, before deducting the total tenant payment by the family. Payment standards matter as this is the maximum monthly subsidy NYCHA will pay for a unit. The illustration on the right represents the current NYCHA payment standards, effective January 1, 2023 for new rentals, transfers, and recertifications that are not an unidentified exception payment standard zip code. TTP is the minimum amount the family will pay towards rent and utilities, current NYCHA exception payment standards. NYCHA has adopted Exception Payment Standards, EPS, for high-opportunity neighborhoods to increase housing opportunities for voucher holders in the search process and reduce potential rent burden for voucher holders residing in these neighborhoods. The EPS effective April 1, 2023, are applicable to households currently residing in EPS zip codes and new lease-ups in EPS zip codes. The Exception Voucher Payment Standards for New Rentals, Transfers, and annual recertifications by zip code for the year 2023 can be viewed by visiting https colon slash slash www.nyc.gov slash site slash NYCHA slash section dash eight slash voucher dash payment dash standards dash VPS dash utility dash allowance dash schedule dot page NYCHA utility allowances one of five for tenants who are responsible for paying their utilities NYCHA provides a utility allowance. This table shows the cooking gas and electric allowance. The gross rent, total cost of housing, is calculated by adding the rent paid and the utility allowance for the unit. If the utilities are included in the rent, the rent to owner and gross rent will be the same number, NYCHA utility allowances, 2 of 5. For tenants who are responsible for paying their utilities, NYCHA provides a utility allowance. This table shows the oil, heat and hot water allowances, NYCHA utility allowances, 3 of 5. For tenants who are responsible for paying their utilities, NYCHA provides a utility allowance. This table shows the gas, heat and hot water allowances, NYCHA utility allowances, 4 of 5. For tenants who are responsible for paying their utilities, NYCHA provides a utility allowance. This table shows the electric heat, hot water, and electric cooking range allowances. Please note, the allowance includes electric and use of the electric stove, NYCHA utility allowances, 5 of 5. For tenants who are responsible for paying their utilities, NYCHA provides a utility allowance. This table shows the heat pump allowances. Please note, the allowance includes heat pumps in apartment buildings and single-family homes, the 40% rule ensuring affordability for new rentals. The 40% rule ensures the affordability of a new rental, ensures affordability for new admissions, and moves when the gross, total, rent exceeds the payment standard. This is to protect the tenant. You are permitted to rent an apartment that exceeds the payment standard. However, your share of the rent will be 30% of the adjusted gross income plus any amount that exceeds the payment standard. NYCHA will not approve your Section 8 rental if your share of the rent is over 40% of your gross adjusted income. Upon an initial lease up, the tenant is prohibited from paying more than 40% of their annual income towards rent. Now we will review your housing choices. Moving within New York City. Voucher holders have the option of living anywhere in the five boroughs of New York City. First-time Section 8 voucher holders have the option of remaining in their unit provided it meets the housing quality standards, and the rent is reasonable. The rent does not need to be within the payment standard to be an approved unit. The rent may exceed the standard but must be affordable. The illustration shows the five steps for moving within New York City. Step 1. Search for a unit. Vouchers are active for 120 days after issuance, 
unless NYCHA grants an extension. Step 2, Return or Submit the Rental Package. The owner can submit the rental package online via the owner extranet or email the paper rental package to s8.rtu at nycha.nyc.gov. Step 3, Rental Packet Review. NYCHA reviews your request for tenancy approval. Step 4, NYCHA inspects the unit. Upon approval of the rental package, a NYCHA rep will contact the owner regarding scheduling the apartment inspection. If the unit passes inspection, then a HAP contract is generated. And Step 5, Move In. The rental is not final until the HAP contract is returned to NYCHA along with a fully executed lease and NYCHA issues the HAP approval letter. Portability, Moving Outside the New York City Area, 1 of 4. Moving outside the New York City area is called portability. Voucher holders have the opportunity to live anywhere in the U.S., Puerto Rico, or the U.S. Virgin Islands as long as there is a Housing Choice Voucher, HCV, program administered in that area. Portability refers to the process through which an applicant family can request to use the Section 8 voucher in a location outside of the five boroughs of New York City. The illustration shows the four steps for moving outside of New York City. For VASH program participants, contact your Veterans Affairs case worker for additional rules on portability. Step 1. Submit Portability Request NYCHA reviews the applicant portability request. Upon approval, NYCHA will issue a portability voucher valid for 120 days. Step 2. NYCHA sends portability request. NYCHA will forward your portability request to the PHA you choose. NYCHA will provide you with the contact information for the receiving PHA. Step 3. Search for a unit. The receiving PHA will issue a voucher so you can start searching for an apartment in your desired area. You must find a new unit within the term specified by the receiving PHA's voucher. And Step 4. Move in. The receiving PHA will notify you of your move-in date. When you receive approval to move in, you must notify NYCHA. Portability, moving outside the New York City area, 2 of 4. To port your voucher, you must. Before moving to another jurisdiction, you must submit the voucher holder request for portability form and receive approval for your request. This process can be initiated online via the tenant self-service portal if you are a current participant. Or if you are an applicant, email the request to us 8 portability at nycha.nyc.gov. Advise NYCHA at least two months before your Section 8 voucher expires. If you are already a Section 8 participant with an open transfer request, you must cancel your transfer request and ask for a portability transfer. Obtain the name, address telephone, and fax number, and contact person of the housing authority, and submit it to NYCHA. NYCHA will provide this information to you if needed. Portability, moving outside the New York City area, 3 of 4. Things to keep in mind when porting. The advantages of portability allow families the flexibility to relocate with assistance, however you should familiarize yourself with your potential location before deciding to move there. Some consider relocating for a new job or school, proximity to other family members, increased choices for a home, etc. Comply with the rules and regulations of the receiving housing authority, which may differ from NYCHA. Portability procedures in the new jurisdiction could be different from NYCHA's. It is important to seek information and pay close attention to requirements at both PHAs. Portability, moving outside the New York City area, 404. Policies applicable under portability. Once you port out, the receiving public housing authority PHA sets the standards for the program. The receiving PHA will set and manage the income limit applicable to the family. Voucher extensions available for searchers. Voucher payment standards. Suspension of voucher term after submission of request for tenancy approval. Policies and procedures related to tenancy. Immigration and Naturalization Service, INS, verification of citizenship or requests for criminal background checks, where applicable. Executing the first lease under the voucher. And subsidy standards, searching for a unit, factors to consider.
searching for housing in low poverty areas will help you gain access to higher quality housing, improved employment opportunities, playgrounds and better schools, community and educational resources, and shopping and public transportation. New York City Census Tracks For your reference, this is a map showing New York City's population below poverty by census tract. This map is also included in your briefing packet. NYCHA Housing Opportunities Map The NYCHA Housing Opportunities Map is a resource that Section 8 voucher holders can use to find rental listings, job opportunities, schools, transportation, and other services in low-poverty neighborhoods. The map can be accessed on NYCHA's Section 8 Tenant Self-Service Portal. HTTPS colon slash slash self serve dot NYCHA dot info slash Find an available Section 8 unit. There are many resources online that can be used to search for available units. Log on to the Tenant Self-Service Portal to view exclusive Section 8 listings from owners registered with NYCHA, screening the owner. Make sure to find out all the information you may need before signing a lease. These are suggested questions to ask the owner or broker before renting from them. What is the monthly rent for the unit? Have you rented with Section 8 before? Have you rented this unit with Section 8 before? Will the rent include utilities, and if so, which are included, and which am I responsible for? Are there any fees associated with moving, such as broker fees or security deposits, fair housing and equal opportunity? If you feel you have been discriminated against in your housing search, please note, it is a violation of New York City human rights law to discriminate based on source of income in housing. Nearly all rentals, including apartments located in co-op and condo buildings are covered under this. The Fair Housing Act, New York State and City human rights laws prohibit discrimination against any person based on the grounds of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, age, familial status, marital status, partnership status, lawful occupation lawful source of income, military status, alienage, or citizenship status, or on the grounds that a person is a victim of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault or stalking. If you feel you have been discriminated against, you may file a complaint with the Department of Equal Opportunity, DEO, at 212-306-4468, or you may contact the New York City Commission on Human Rights at 718-722-3131. New York State Division of Human Rights Toll-Free Hotline at 1-888-392-3644 and or HUD. NYCHA will provide the voucher holder with a list of outside agencies with whom they can file claims, access for persons with limited English proficiency. NYCHA provides language assistance to limited English proficiency, LEP, persons, to promote their meaningful access to NYCHA's programs and activities in accordance with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development notice entitled Final Guidance to Federal Financial Assistance Recipients Regarding Title VI Prohibition Against National Origin Discrimination Affecting Limited English Proficient LEP, Persons, published in the Federal Register at 72 Fed Reg 2732, January 22, 2007 NYCHA has a standard procedure implementing the HUD guidance regarding language assistance, which applies to the HCVP. Reasonable Accommodations A reasonable accommodation, RA, in housing is a change or modification that provides a qualified individual an equal opportunity to participate in, or benefit from, a program or activity. Some of examples of who qualifies include those with medical or chronic health issues, mobility impairments, physical disabilities, visual impairments, etc. Some types of reasonable accommodations include transfer to a more accessible unit, apartment modifications, ramps, lower cabinets, etc., policies related to persons with disabilities. NYCHA will make reasonable accommodation to persons with disabilities to ensure that they may fully access and use the HCVP and related services. NYCHA will provide an opportunity for an applicant or participant to request an accommodation on the application and other forms. 
This policy is intended to afford persons with disabilities equal opportunity to obtain the same results and gain the same benefits as those who do not have disabilities, and is applicable to all situations described in this plan. The individual making the request must meet requirements outlined in the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988, Section 504 of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and the New York State and New York City Human Rights Laws. NYCHA will review all requests, and will make a determination based on the information provided. In accordance with Section 504 of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act, if the need for the accommodation is not readily apparent, the family must explain the relationship between the requested accommodation and the disability. In order for NYCHA to approve a request for reasonable accommodation, the applicant or participant may be required to submit documentation from a medical professional to support the request. NYCHA may deny the request if it will cause an undue financial or administrative burden or will change the fundamental nature of the program. NYCHA will notify applicants and participants in writing if it denies the request. The Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, is a federal law providing protections for applicants, tenants, and families assisted in the Section 8 public housing, and other HUD-funded programs. Under VAWA, victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking may not be denied admission to, denied assistance under, terminated from participation in, or evicted from Section 8 assisted housing on the basis of or as a direct result of the fact that the applicant or participant is or has been a VAWA victim. Under the regulations, NYCHA can terminate HCVP assistance to those who commit acts of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, or stalking against household members. VAWA also enables owners to evict abusers by bifurcating a lease to remove a person who has committed the abuse. The regulations also permit NYCHA to terminate HCVP assistance to VAWA victims, or owners to evict VAWA victims on independent grounds unrelated to their status as VAWA victims, band owners. This table represents the names of individuals or management firms or entities that NYCHA cannot engage in business with. Therefore, when searching for a unit, please do not attempt to rent a unit in buildings owned or managed by any of these entities. Please call the Customer Contact Center at 718-707-7771 with any questions about this list. We will now discuss housing quality standard requirements. What are housing quality standards or HQS? The Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, established housing quality standards to define the minimum criteria for safe housing. Housing quality standards require that every Section 8 unit have heat, hot, and cold water, and an operable window in each living room and bedroom. In addition, all units must have a private bathroom and a fully equipped kitchen. However, there are exceptions. A private bathroom and kitchen is not required if a participant is residing in a single room occupancy unit SRO. All SROs may not have a private bathroom and kitchen for residents. All units receiving Section 8 assistance must meet HUD established housing quality standards HQS, before move in and throughout the assisted tenancy. Non-life threatening NLT provision for the HQS inspection process. NYCHA adopted the non-life-threatening NLT provision from PIH Notice 2017-20, HA, effective September 1, 2018, for the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. With this provision, NYCHA updated its definition of life-threatening LT violations and may approve the rental of a unit that fails for non-life-threatening conditions with a voucher holder's consent. Here is the updated list of 24-hour life-threatening LT violations. Gas, natural or liquid petroleum, leak or fumes. Electrical hazards that could result in shock or fire. Inoperable or missing smoke detector. Interior air quality, missing or non-functioning carbon monoxide detector. Gas or oil-fired water heater or heating, ventilation or cooling system with missing, damaged, improper or misaligned chimney or venting. Lack of alternative means of exit in case of fire or blocked egress. 
Other interior hazards include deteriorated paint surfaces as defined by 24 CFR 35.110 in a unit built before 1978 that is to be occupied by a family with a child under 6 years of age. And any other condition subsequently identified by HUD as LT in a notice published in the Federal Register. Any other condition identified by the administering PHA as life-threatening in the PHA's administrative plan prior to April 18, 2017. These conditions include Building in imminent danger of collapse Illegal window gates on fire escapes About the non-life-threatening NLT provision for the HQS inspection process. All apartments subsidized under the Section 8 program must meet Federal Housing Quality Standards, HQS. NYCHA will not approve a unit that fails for any life-threatening conditions. However, if the unit fails the HQS inspection for non-life-threatening, NLT, condition only, you will have the following options. 1. Wait until repairs are made. 2. Continue your housing search, or 3. Accept the unit with NLT conditions. NYCHA will notify you if the unit fails the HQS inspection for NLT conditions only. You will have the opportunity to accept the unit with the NLT conditions. If you accept the unit with NLT conditions, please note that the owner has 30 calendar days from the date of the inspection to satisfactorily complete the repairs. If the owner fails to make the necessary repairs within 30 calendar days, NYCHA will issue a transfer voucher to you. You will need to find another apartment and submit a completed rental packet before the transfer voucher expires to receive Section 8 assistance. To expedite your move, it is important that the unit must be in move-in condition prior to the HQS inspection. These are the top 5 reasons units fail housing quality standards inspections. Electrical Hazards Missing Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, GFCI Exposed Wires Loose or Broken Light Fixtures Window Conditions Improperly Installed or Missing Window Guards Incorrect Screws Used to Install the Guards Window Broken Window Does Not Stay Up Ceiling and Floor Conditions Severely Cracked or Damaged Ceiling Missing or Damaged Ceiling or floor tiles, exposed subfloor, uneven floor, tripping hazards, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, missing batteries, missing detector, installed in the wrong location, and kitchen and or bathroom sink, leaking faucet, leaking pipes under sink, water temperature is under 110 degrees Fahrenheit or over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot and cold reversed. Note, if the unit fails for new rental or transfer HQS inspections, NYCHA may authorize the rental of a unit if it fails for non-life-threatening NLT conditions only. Here's what you need to know about lead-based paint. Buildings built before 1978 may contain lead-based paint. An owner must disclose to you the presence of any lead-based paint in the unit. Lead found in paint, paint chips and dust may pose serious health hazards, especially to young children. More information is provided in the Protect Your Family from Lead in Your Home, booklet in your packet. This section will review the next steps after finding the right unit. Applicant Lease Up Process Overview The illustration shows the five steps for the lease up process. Step 1. Applicant completes the application. Next NYCHA reviews the application. Step 2. Searching for a unit the applicant will receive a PIN letter and voucher. The voucher is active for 120 days after issuance unless NYCHA grants an extension. Step 3. When it is time to return and submit the rental package the owner can submit the rental package online via the owner extranet or email the paper rental package to s8.rtu at nycha.nyc.gov. Step 4. NYCHA inspects the unit. Upon approval of the rental package NYCHA will contact the owner to schedule an HQS inspection. If the unit passes inspection, then a HAP contract is generated. In Step 5, the move-in. The rental is not final until the HAP contract is returned to NYCHA along with a fully executed lease and NYCHA issues the HAP approval letter.
online applicant and tenant rental packet. NYCHA is now accepting the rental packet documents electronically. Eligible applicants and tenants will not be issued a paper rental packet for the owner to complete. Instead, those eligible applicants and tenants will be issued a voucher PIN letter which will contain a PIN for the owner to complete the rental packet on the owner extranet. The voucher PIN letter will also instruct applicants and tenants how to review and approve the rental packet documents on the tenant self-service portal. Note, if the applicant, tenant or the owner requires a paper rental packet, please call the CCC or visit the walk-in center nearest you after finding the right unit and submitting the rental packet online. Bring the voucher PIN letter and the copy of the voucher to the owner. After the owner submits the rental documents online, the applicant should log into the tenant self-service portal. Click the Rental slash Transfer Voucher Status tab on the portal and review the documents submitted by the owner. At the bottom of the screen applicant and tenant must sign the document electronically and approve the rental packet. After finding the right unit and returning the paper rental packet, one of two. You or the property owner must return your paper rental packet prior to the voucher expiration date. Number 1. Rental packets will be accepted via email. The owner must complete all required documents and send the PDF documents via email to sa.rtu at nycha.nyc.gov. Number 2. NYCHA walk-in centers are open to the public. The voucher holder slash owner also can submit the completed rental documents at the nearest walk-in center. No appointments are needed to drop off documents. However, appointments must be scheduled for all other reasons by calling the NYCHA customer contact center or visiting on.nyc.gov slash NYCHA-CCC-APPT. Number 3. For general questions call us at 7187077771 Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. after finding the right unit and returning the paper rental packet 2 of 2 When returning your rental packet keep the following tips in mind Return the packet with all pages together Do not use white out on the forms If you need a new form print out a new one Do not cross out or draw lines on the documents only write in the boxes on the forms. You may only submit one request for tenancy approval at a time, after finding the right unit and reviewing the rental packet, one of two. Rental Packet Review NYCHA will review and verify all information submitted. If the packet is complete, NYCHA will move forward with processing your request. Next, Inspection of the Rental Unit a NYCHA representative will contact the owner regarding scheduling the apartment inspection. If the unit or building fail inspection, NYCHA will notify the owner. The owner will have the opportunity to complete the necessary repairs. The owner will call the CCC to schedule a re-inspection once repairs are completed, after finding the right unit and reviewing the rental packet, 2 of 2. NYCHA will authorize you to move in. If the unit passes inspection, and all required documentation has been reviewed and approved, NYCHA will contact your owner to sign a HAP contract. After NYCHA has executed the HAP contract, your approval letter to move in will be emailed to you. Only after you receive the move in letter, you may move into the apartment. The letter will inform you of your share of the rent and NYCHA's share of the rent. Important, you should not sign the lease with the owner until after the unit is approved by NYCHA. Next. Move into the unit. Move into the unit and comply with tenancy requirements. We will now review owner rental documents from the rental packet. Section 8 Property Owner Documents, 1 of 2. The applicant or tenant must log into the NYCHA tenant self-service portal at https colon slash slash self-serve.nycha.info slash to view the property owner documents. If the applicant or tenant opted out for paper documents, provide the following documents to the owner or if the applicant slash tenant misplaced the documents, please log into the NYCHA tenant self-service portal and print the property owner documents. You must print these four documents for the owner and you to complete. 1. A Section 8 Property Owner Registration Form. 2. A Request for Taxpayer ID Number and Certification for the Owner. 3. A Request for Tenancy Approval. 
This form requires both tenant and owner signatures. 4. A disclosure of information on lead base paint and or lead base paint hazards, which require both tenant and owner signatures. If you do not have a printer, you can print at the CCC. This is an example of pages 1 and 5 of the Section 8 Property Owner Registration Form. In this document, the owner enters information about the tenant, building, dwelling unit and ownership information. It is important that the exact legal name of owner is the same as the name that appears on the deed. The owner may enter a physical address or a P.O. box address. This is an example of the W-9, Request for Taxpayer ID Number and Certification. A P.O. box address cannot be used for this form. Request for Tenancy Approval, 1 of 2. This is the Request for Tenancy Approval document. This slide illustrates pages 1 and 2 of the Request for Tenancy Approval, RFDA, form. The owner has to complete this form. It must be signed by the owner and participant. In box 3, the owner must enter the lease start and end dates but does not have to submit a copy of the lease. Box 4 must include the exact number of bedrooms in the unit. And, if built after 1937, Karen Certificate of Occupancy, CO, is required in Box 5. In the same document, the owner must also specify fuel type, and who pays the utilities, request for tenancy approval, 2 of 2. This slide illustrates pages 3 and 4 of the request for tenancy approval, RFDA, form. Signatures are required from both the applicant and the owner. The Disclosure of Information on Lead Base Paint and or Lead Base Paint Hazards Form This slide illustrates pages 1 and 2 of the Lead Base Paint Disclosure Form. Signatures are required from both the applicant and the owner. Section 8 Property Owner Document, 2 of 2. In addition, the owner must submit the following documents. If your unit is rent stabilized a copy of the previous lease or division of housing and renewal form. If the unit was built after 1937, another required document is the Certificate of Occupancy, or CO. If a Certificate of Occupancy is not available, a letter of no objection from the Department of Buildings must be submitted. In addition, a copy of the deed must be submitted. If the deed is unrecorded, the owner must also submit a letter from the closing attorney. Certain exceptions apply. Please refer to the Rental Packet Checklist, NYCHA Form 059.132 in your briefing packet for a complete list of requirements. We will now review Responsibility of the Applicant and Tenant, Annual Obligations for HCV Participants. It is required to complete and submit the Affidavit of Income for Income Recertification for all household members annually. This includes submitting any supporting verification for example, pay stubs, receipts. To provide the Section 8 and HUD inspectors access to your unit as necessary to inspect. And to obtain permission from both NYCHA and your owner to add new members to your household. Exceptions include births, adoptions, and court-awarded custody. Please note that NYCHA performs criminal and sex offender background checks on all new household members 16 and older, remain in good standing. Comply with program requirements including completing your annual recertification on time, allowing access to your unit for HQS inspections, and, if necessary, allowing access to the owner for repairs. Do not allow unauthorized persons to reside in your unit. Do not sublease the unit or room in the unit. Do not use or possess illegal controlled substances. Do not commit violent crimes. Do not fail to report all household income and assets. Do not submit false statements and documents to NYCHA. Do not threaten NYCHA personnel. Do not vacate the unit without first notifying NYCHA, requesting to add a household member. You must provide the following documents listed below if you would like to add a member to your household. Third-party verification consent to release information. This form must be signed by all household members 18 years of age or older. Debts owed and terminations. This form must be signed by all household members 18 years of age or older. Declaration of Citizenship Status Copy of the Birth Certificate Copy of the Social Security Card or Alien Registration Card or I-94 Number Proof of Income, Assets, and Expenses 
Submitting a transfer request online. You may submit a request for transfer online using the tenant self-service portal after you have resided in the unit for a year. After submission of the transfer request, you will receive a transfer approval letter by email. Log back into the tenant self-service portal to sign the voucher. Show the voucher to the owner along with the rental package documents. The steps are as follows. Click on Rental slash Transfer Voucher box. Click on Rental slash Transfer Voucher status tab. Click on I confirm and type your name then click Submit. Go to the Lease Up Documents tab to view rental documents. The voucher and the PIN letter will be available to print. If you need assistance, contact NYCHA. We're open 24-7 online via the Tenant Self-Service Portal, one of two. Section 8 Tenants and applicants can access information about their case or application online via the Tenant Self-Service Portal. To use the portal, you must be listed as the head of household. Note, if you do not have an email address at the time of registration on the Self-Service Portal, Please use the tab key on your keyboard to move over the email address field to the username field. Do not use the mouse. This leaves a default email address in the email address field and will allow you to continue with registration on the self-service portal. New portal users will be prompted to create a unique username and password to log in. To access the tenant self-service portal, if you are not registered in the tenant self-service portal, Please follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the voucher PIN letter. If you are already registered go to NYCHA's Section 8 Tenant Self-Service Portal, https slash slash self slash. We're open 24-7 online via the Tenant Self-Service Portal, 2 of 2. Registered Section 8 voucher holders may use the portal to view basic case information. Complete their annual recertification and upload supporting documents. Request an interim recertification and upload supporting documents. Search for available Section 8 units. View their inspection date and reschedule if necessary, up to one time. Request a special inspection. Request a reasonable accommodation. Request a 5 borough or portability transfer. Contact us by phone. Call the Customer Contact Center, CCC, Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. at 718-707-77712. Request a reasonable accommodation. Update your personal information for example, email address, telephone number, mailing address, etc. Have your owner schedule an inspection. Communicate changes in your tenancy. Do you have questions? Contact us with Section 8 questions by calling the Customer Contact Center at 718-707-7771, Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. To access the portal, go to NYCHA's Section 8 Tenant Self-Service Portal which is https colon slash slash self slash